It's Gail with everything Nash here with AGT finalist, maybe winner, Drake Milligan. Drake, so good to see you. Great to see you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, of course, we we are religious watchers of the show and our family. And when we watched it, um, your first performance, I was like, I think I could be his friend. So we have to be friends. Special. We're friends. <laughs> okay. So are you surprised by everything that has happened just since you've been on the show? Or are you not surprised? Uh, yeah, I'm totally surprised. I, I, I didn't think it was going to happen on the scale it's happened. Uh, the shows we've been playing are crazy. People are showing up. They're singing along to all the songs. Um, it's changed my career uh, completely. When you're up on that stage, we probably can't imagine what it's like. But if you could articulate, you're getting ready to perform in front of a bazillion people. What does that even feel like? It's, uh, you know, it, you, you try not to think about it too much. I mean, you, you try to focus on, like, the last live show we did. It was so much fun because you have a great, you have that great audience. You have that, that wonderful audience here in Pasadena um, who's, like, on their feet, going wild. And you try not to think about the 8 million people behind that camera right there. You know, it's, it's you try not to think about it. But it is, it's exhilarating. It's like, and it's kind of addictive to be on that stage. And just know that you're reaching that many people at one time. Um, and so it just makes you want to like go back and do it again. Which you get to because you made it to the finale. Were you surprised by that or were you not surprised? Be honest. Uh, you know, I was surprised. I, I really, I, I was really just looking forward. Like I said, it was so, it was so much fun to do that live show that I just wanted to go back and do that again. So I was like, I was just so happy that, that I could go and, and be on this stage again. Um, because really, that was really what I was focused on. And how are you feeling now? You're only a few days away from finding out if you just find, if you win and um, win a million dollars too, no big deal. Um, how are you feeling? Uh, you know, we're, 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 uh, we're in the midst of uh, preparing for this performance. So um, I'm just focused on, on doing what I need to do. I'm focused on getting out there and, and having as much fun as possible out on that stage. Do you feel like a winner in a lot of respects already because your songs went to number one as they should have and your fan base has just exploded. So what, I mean, you kind of feel like a winner either way, I would assume. Absolutely. I, I already feel, I already feel like a winner. I mean, of course you want to, you want to win, you want to win that million dollars and have that Vegas show and, and be a, you know, be a winner. But I, I, I do uh, win, lose or draw. I feel, I feel like a winner. Okay, let's talk about your music career. Aside from AGT, you have your Dallas Fort Worth album coming out. What a great title! Nobody's done that before. Yeah, um, credit goes to uh, Adrian Michaels at Stony Creek Records. We were sitting there one day, and and you know, I've I've, I've been in Nashville about five years, and, and really, this record is kind of a culmination of a ton of songs that I've written in those five years. And we were sitting there. Uh, in Houston a while back and we had these 14 tracks cut and, and Adrian goes, man, your music is like, it's like Dallas and Fort Worth. It's just so different. You know, you've got, you've got this kind of polished side and you've got this kind of traditional honky talk side. And that's when the live bulb went off. We're like, wow, that that's it. That's what, that's what the record should be called. We should put out all these tracks. Um, Cause we were looking at maybe releasing a record, you know, with the usual 11 tracks, you know, and trying to cut some of those out. And we were like, man, we have all these tracks. Like, let's put them all out. And uh, so we did. And, and, and you know, you have the, the – I grew up in, in Fort Worth, just south of Fort Worth. And it's such a traditional kind of city, right? It's, it's just – it kind of holds on to its roots. You have the Stockyards. You have Billy Bob's. Um, it's, a, it's a city that really kind of holds true to its roots and, and, and loves tradition. And I like to call it a little, little more dust on their boots, right? And uh, Dallas is, of course, a big, big city and trying to be – you know, the next big thing and, and looking towards the future. And so it was a great way to split up these songs. It's like, I have that, that side of me that, that, you know, wants to be on radio and, and I, and, and once, you know, it's kind of more polished and, and that kind of side or maybe a little bit of rock influence. And then the side of me that's holding on to my roots and, and, and wants to do a little honky tonk and traditional country music. I am. Right before I spoke to you, I spoke to Pat Green, who is one of the most beloved Texas artists. So I'm curious how it felt for you being in Texas, which is such a music city, and then moving to Nashville. Uh, you know, it's, it's a big change of pace. Um, 
I, but I love I love Nashville, and I love I, I sought out uh, kind of the veteran songwriters in Nashville and veteran musicians and veteran producers like Tony Brown uh, in in Nashville, um, and and I try to bring you know my kind of Texas thing uh, to everything I was doing in Nashville. So it's really it really is fun to to get to explore and 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 get to bring in different flavors to that to that Texas thing. And you also had another really cool thing happen. You got a cut on Ronnie Dunn's album. Hello. I did. Ah! <laughs> I did. It was so cool. Um, that was a song, uh, If Love Ever Comes My Way Again. And I wrote it with Jim, Jim Beavers and Brett Beavers. And we didn't write it really. Well, we, we kind of, when we started writing it, got like halfway through the song, we got to that chorus that's kind of that real kind of yodely, you know, kind of uh, chorus. We're like, man, it's kind of a Ronnie Dunn thing. And um, luckily, it's, it found its way to Ronnie. And uh, it's so cool because he does that, you know, he hadn't really done that high falsetto thing since Mario Maria. And uh, it's it's cool to hear him sing that. And, of course, he's one of my heroes. So to hear one of your heroes sing a song you wrote is really, really cool. Yeah, that's a bucket list. I'm not a songwriter, but I'd love to have a song recorded by Ronnie John. I mean, seriously. <laughs> So can we talk real quick before I let you go? Can we talk about your band? Because they sound so good. Have, I'm assuming they've been with you for a while. Uh, for a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I really, I really wasn't able to play a whole lot of shows until after uh, COVID, right? But about last year. So all these guys have been with me um, about a year or so. Some of them, some of them less, some of them more. Um, but these are like my crew, you know, they're like, they're my guys. Uh, we're in it for the long haul. So, um, yeah, they're, they're amazing guys. And, and to have them on the show with me on AGT, uh, has really been great. You know, it's, they're a great support system too. And I can look around on stage and I go, okay, they're with me. I feel good. You know? Yeah. They're, they're amazing. I'm just going to, you can tell them I said that they're amazing. <laughs> so I want to go back to what we talked about earlier. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm ready. Um, I feel like I gained a lot of confidence with the last live show uh, on AGT. Um, you know, to, to, to be able to sing an original song on, on live television for millions of people and to get a great response like that uh, just fills me with the confidence, you know, and then I feel like hopefully I'll walk away with even more of that confidence after the final round and be able to, uh, to take that into my career and, and try to go a long ways. Well, best of luck to you, Drake. It's so great to talk to you. Thank you very much.